in 2012 and um, to keep the wary quarter so that it, uh, it complements the National Park Service plan, uh, which is to say uh, limited only to tourism, hospitality, uh, recreation, open space, and therefore protecting the green spaces in the view shed. And uh, so your thoughts, and we're gonna start with Mrs. Green. Well, I guess it's a misnomer. I guess you just have to understand that I have a passion about the Fort Monroe. It just needs to stay intact. I think that if you keep, keep it intact, the whole nation can come and visit it at any given time. You have movie production companies. You have uh, 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 big organizations. You have uh, sports arena, sports uh, people, bikers, uh, sailors, yard. Yachting, yachting experience, repairing and sports, what I'm trying to say. You have a lot of different options that we can use that as an arena to enjoy and make money off of. Uh, turn some of those homes that there right now into some housing for getting our VA individuals back on their feet so they can get reconstituted uh, back into our, 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 our um, city. Uh, maybe make a little library out there. Make this a living space that people want to come in. Make this a space where our youth will want to say, this is my city and that's my park. That resolution was good in 2012 and it's just as good today. The weary quarter needs to stay like it is. We wrote a good resolution. We were passionate about it. We know we wrote a good resolution. I supported it. I voted for it. We know we've done a good job. People want to come to the Weary Quarter. The mayor and I were at a car show not long ago, and we talked to the fellow that was running the car show at the convention center, and now, because of some dialogue with Glenn Oder at Fort Monroe and what the city has, has been able to uh, do, we're bringing a national car show to the Weary Quarter, and that's where they want to go, that's where they want to be. It is perfect for something like that, and these people have thousands and thousands of dollars in their investment in automobiles. And, and you'll never get me to say an automobile is an investment, but their investment in those automobiles, those antiques, and they want to come to the very quarter because it's so beautiful. We need to keep it that way. It was a good resolution then, it's a good resolution now. Mr. Leader? I was stationed at Fort Monroe. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of history behind that. And that, and there was so much in, involved in that base that a lot of times I didn't even have to leave the base. And his own movie theater, bowling alley, you know, uh, the swimming quarters going down there by Dog Beach, uh, the Chamberlain. There was everything you needed on that base, and it still is today. If we would just uh, bring businesses in there to open up, about, like, for example, the community center. I work for the Parks Department. We just picked up the community center, and the old provost office down there is the local police station down in that area. There's so much to be done there, and where it's cornered the way it is, yeah, keep the way it was. I was stationed, I, I stayed with uh, Robert E. Lee quarters. And there's so much going on down here that if you a history buff that's from Vermont or from California, we promote it the right way. Tourism can be fabulous, and it could really happen here in Virginia if we just push a little further to where it is today. And as your council person, I'll make sure that uh, Fort Monroe's number one attraction on the map. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I'm different than I was when I first ran. Can I keep it real with you all? Or you want me sugarcoat it? When I went to the former World Authority meeting, the lady, Terry Sue, she said Hampton only wants houses in the worry quarters. In my opinion, that resolution is bogus because up to this point, what has it been a, a whole national park from the, from the start? Why was it offered? a donut hole. Why was it when the, the governor signed, like I just mentioned, to, that it's going to be a national park and it hasn't been yet? <clears throat> Why is it that when the former uh, vice mayor got kicked off the former road board and the mayor at the time, and then they, they replaced it, two, two people, one was her brother, and now she's in charge of all the <coughs> national resources in the city in the state of Virginia. So therefore, I think that National Park uh, resolution is bogus, and I think we need to stand up and make sure that that becomes a real national park before the current governor leaves office. Mr. Gray? Mr. Gray? 
Well, Fort Monroe is a, a national treasure, and it's right here in the city of Hampton. And, I said, and, and we have an opportunity uh, you know, to, to take advantage of what Fort Monroe will be in terms of tourism, economic development, and, and so forth to benefit the city, the Commonwealth, and, and, and the nation as a whole. And so, I, I, you know, I, I can see that at some point in the future, there will be people coming from all over this country to visit Fort Monroe as they travel through all the other tourist attractions here in the region, this will be one of their stops. So, you know, there, there's potential for some development uh, at Fort Monroe. It needs to be done responsibly. So I will support the resolution in place uh, to, to make sure that we control that development and keep Fort Monroe open as they make the national trade that we think it really can be. Thank you very much.